so I can record it. In case you're absent one day, you can watch the video on YouTube. Alright, so, uh, two things today. Physical properties, and then states of matter, which is one of the physical properties we're going to go into in depth. So this is the first day of actual chemistry. So if anybody, you know, did poorly in the beginning, has a chance to start out fresh. Do you know how to do ratios? Well, I bet you I'm going to start doing that. What you say? Do you know how to do ratios? I don't know how to do ratios. Alright, I'm going to do two. Okay. We're going to Alright, so physical properties and states of matter. Have you got this written down? No. We're taking those for both periods. No, just one period. This is the lab. The lab will start as soon as the bell Start lab. This is six. That's it. Physical properties. So here's the definition. It is something that you can measure without changing the substance. So if you have to change the substance to measure it, then it's not a physical property. So in other words, for me to find out if something burns, I have to light it on fire. When I light it on fire, it's now a new substance. So whether or not it burns, flammability is not a physical property. What is the length of something, the mass of something, the density, uh, the color, the hardness, conductivity, that means electrical or heat. Uh, state, solid, liquid, gas, these are all physical properties. It's a pass to get your picture taken. Should say the time on the first one. What is that? What is that? Malleability. It means can you bend it easily or reshape it? Yeah. Is it bendable? Because is it bendable is three words, and that's one word. So if something is malleable, that means you can shape it. So metals are malleable. Um, some plastics are somewhere. What's not malleable, the opposite, would be glass. Glass shatters if you try to bend it or shape it. What if you make it hot? Well, that would be malleable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you don't have to get to the bottom here if you don't want to. These are things that you can't measure without changing the substance. So these are not physical properties. Flammability, reactivity, things like that. You don't need to copy. What's that? You don't need to copy. You don't have to put it. These are, uh, so these are the other choices, which would be chemical properties, which we'll talk about some other today. Yeah. Changes. Just leave some space. I'll put it before you at the end. Uh, so, 
Physical changes obviously re relate to physical properties. Um, so this is something that you can change without changing what the material is. So if you bend something, if you break it, if you smash it, it's still the same substance. Uh, if you crack a glass, it's still glass. Uh, if you tear up a piece of paper, it's still paper. I didn't. Uh, so breaking, shredding, crushing, also the ones that people usually confuse, melting, freezing, boiling. If you change something from a solid to a liquid to a gas, you're not changing what the substance is. So if you take water and you freeze it, it's still H2O. If you boil water and turn into steam, it's still H2O. So that's not, that is still a physical change. You're not changing what the substance is. The only time you are changing the substance is if it's burning, if it's rotting, if it's corroding, then you actually have a new substance. Like when you burn paper, it's not paper anymore. Okay, so that's it for physical changes, physical properties. Now we're talking about states of matter. And what I'm going to do with states of matter is I'm going to explain to you what solids, liquids, and gases are on the macroscopic level, like what you see. And then I'm going to explain to you on the microscopic level what they look like and how that causes their properties on the macroscopic level. So let's start with a solid. So a solid is a substance that is not easily compressible and it does not take the shape it's contained. Two separate things. And for each of the three, solids, liquids, and gases, those are the two things we're going to concern ourselves with. Do they take the shape of their container and are they compressible? I have a question. Yeah. Wouldn't my shirt be considered a solid? Your shirt is a solid, yes. But it can take the shape. Oh, thank you. All this is one? No close? All right. One more sheet of paper. So you could squish it into a space, uh, but you wouldn't really fill it in in the same way a liquid would. Like you couldn't force your shirt into a pipe and force it to flow through there. So although I understand what you're saying, it wouldn't be the same as putting water into something. Put it a different way. Um, <coughs> imagine one of the teapots where the spout, the water fills up inside the spout. So if you put water in there, it would fill up in the teapot and then in the spout too. Then the handle there, it's got. But if you put a shirt in there, you stuff it in there. It wouldn't fill up those other little spaces. You just kind of get the main part. It wouldn't really take the shape. All right. Uh, the reason solids behave this way is that on a microscopic level, the, par the particles are very, very tightly packed. So, so tightly packed that you can't squeeze them any closer together, which is why they're not compressible. And also, the atoms cannot move past each other. So since they can't move past each other, it can't change its shape. And I use the words particles and atoms interchangeably. The particles is better because it kind of covers all three. Everything's either made out of atoms, molecules, or ions. Well, just about everything. Mm.
substances. Liquids in a substance is also not easily compressible, but liquids do take the shape of their container. And what I'll do is I will show you that you can't compress a liquid here. So, I have a syringe here, and you can see that if you put your finger on top of here and you try to squeeze it, you can't squish this water into a smaller volume, no matter how much force you apply. I and mean, if you apply it, that means millions of pounds of force, you might compress this small amount, but not very much. And you can try this, you can put your finger on top and see if you can squeeze it, and you'll see that you really can't. And you can put your finger on top. Wow. Of it. Yeah. You have to cover the hole. Wow. <laughs> It's a huge thing on top right now. I'm not scared. Have got this one? No. I think we're challenged some medicine down so you had to use a lot of water with it. Maybe. Maybe they just make it for us in science for us. All right, liquids. So the liquids, the particles are still very close together, but not quite as tightly packed. So there's enough room for the particles to slide around each other, which is why a liquid can change shape. But they're still close enough that you really can't squeeze them any tighter together, so you can't compress them. So if you want to think about a liquid as something that you've seen before, imagine like a jar of marbles. You can't squeeze the marbles any smaller into a smaller space in the jar, but you can put your finger in there and slide them around and move them around each other. That's kind of how liquids behave with your microscopic liquid. A solid would be more like, a, if you've seen them coffee uh, bags that are like vacuum sealed, so the coffee feels like it's like a brick. It's coffee grounds, but you can't move them around because they're so tightly squeezed together that they, they feel solid. That's kind of how atoms are in a solid. They're so close together, you can't move the individual particles around. All right, everybody got this? I need to imagine. All right, gases, last one. So the gas is easily compressible, and it takes the shape of its container. Let me see that. How do you think it's done? I say it looks like it. No, it's great to think <laughs> Okay, so gas is, if I just fill this up with air and I put my finger over it, you can see that you can very easily squeeze this into half or even a quarter of its volume without too much force, just a few that pounds of force. There, by the sink. <laughs> So I'll pass this around so you guys can try this now. Yep. So that's really how we define the difference between you know, a liquid and a gas, is can you compress it or not.
plenty of room to squeeze them close together, which is why they're easily compressible. So this would be like if you spill marbles on the floor and they spread out over the whole room, it's very easy to push them back close together. And of course they do take the shape of the container, obviously. Solids, liquids, gases. That's it. Bobby, shut that off the camera. Leave the uh, other thing on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.